OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. We're going to create a, a liquid syllabus template in Google Sites. So if you noticed on the description of this webinar, it asks that you already have a Gmail. So if you have a Gmail, uh, a public Gmail, then you also have access to Google Sites. So we will not be creating Gmails during the presentation. Um, so if you don't have one, just follow along and um, I can help you maybe at uh, the break that we have. And then of course, um, we have the evaluation. So make sure that you fill that out. That's really important for OTAN and for us as presenters. So we talked about muting. Um, Veronica talked about a lot of these housekeeping. So I'm just gonna quickly go through this and um, ask that you please ask questions during the relaxation break. And of course, if you have them, type them in chat um, as they come along and then um, Veronica will let me know and um, I'll try to answer them as quickly as I can. And this is a hands-on webinar. So if you feel comfortable just watching, that's absolutely okay as well. However, um, we won't do tech troubleshooting. So I'll show you how to access, but um, we really won't have time for the tech troubleshooting. And then if you wanna follow along during the demo, as Veronica mentioned, you can minimize your screen in Zoom um, by um, selecting exit full screen and those arrows typically appear at the top right of your screen. So once we get to that portion of the presentation, then um, I'll remind you of that as well. Okay, so let's get started. Um, I purposely chose this emoji really excited because that's how I feel about liquid syllabus. I think it's a really, really great tool for you as an instructor and for your students as well. So we're gonna talk about that. Um, so what is a liquid syllabus? So a liquid syllabus is defined as an accessible public website that incorporates a brief friendly welcome video. So there is a welcome video that I include included in mine, um, but I have additional videos because I like to open the week up with um, welcome videos for the week. Um, and it's written in student-centered language. So that's really, really important to um, think about um, creating, this is all to create um, student-centered learning, student-centered language. So when you use this in conjunction with culturally, culturally responsive teaching pedagogy, uh, the liquid syllabus contributes to creating a more equitable learning environment for all students. So I have a link at the at this on this page for Michelle Pakansky Brock. She is somebody that I follow, somebody that um, I've gotten training from on liquid syllabus and just humanizing your course and using um, student-centered language. Um, this link is to her site and um, you can take um, classes through her as well. Um, so, um, so make sure you check that out at your leisure. So we're going to watch one of Michelle's videos and um, this video explains the benefits of a liquid syllabus for a student. Um, so this type of syllabus supports student learning. Um, students have a sense of belonging in your course. Um, it humanizes your course, so it lowers students' effective filter, and it's very mobile friendly, especially um, when using, uh, creating this on Google Sites. And this is a short video, it's only um, a little under three minutes, so let's go ahead and watch the video. I know what you're thinking. I have a syllabus. I've worked really hard on it. So why should I take the time to also create a liquid syllabus? And what does that mean anyway? After all, I already have my syllabus online in the form of a PDF. 
and I know all my students can access it in Canvas. But folks, the thing is, when your syllabus is behind a login screen, it may be tough for students to get to it from their phone. And no matter how lovely it looks on a computer, reading it on a mobile device is tough. The information in that syllabus is important, right? The bottom line is, when we use tools designed for print products, they don't result in mobile-friendly experiences. And that's not good for our students. How might things change if you used a website tool like Google Sites or WordPress to create a liquid version of your syllabus? For just a moment, imagine being a student. It's the start of your first semester in college and the week before class starts. You check your email and you get a friendly welcome message from your sociology instructor. It includes a button at the bottom to check the syllabus. You tap that button with your finger and instantly you go to a syllabus that's easy to read and experience with the swipe of your finger. And you also discover something pretty special at the top. Hi scholars, my name is Katie Whitman Conklin and I'm going to be your instructor this semester. A little bit about me, I lived in the Central Valley of California for a lot of years with my husband and children while he was stationed there with the Navy. And when he retired, we moved to Northern Idaho, where we now live with our kids on a family ranch. You think to yourself, hey, I'm going to love this class. I can't wait to get started. But you know what? That's not the only benefit of a liquid syllabus. Since it lives on the web, it's shareable with a simple link. That means you can place that link in as many other places as you'd like. How about adding it next to your course description in your college's class schedule, or on your profile page on your college website, or a link on your own professional website? And you know what can really help promote your course and encourage more students to enroll? That's right, share it on Twitter. When we design with web tools, we create mobile-friendly content that supports our students in so many ways. It also lets them know we care. Okay, so she talked about some of the benefits for both um, instructors and students, but mainly students. Um, so I'm gonna go over some highlights. So for the instructor, it humanizes your class especially in this online environment, right? We want to do what we can to replicate um, that face-to-face -face classroom. Now, I was an online instructor prior to, be, prior to the pandemic and prior to us going online. So I was always searching for ways to make my course more interactive, make my Zoom sessions, um, more collaborative. So um, when I discovered Liquid Syllabus, I was so excited about it. Um, like Michelle mentioned, it's easily shareable on all devices, on your computer, on a tablet, and a smartphone. And when I demo my Liquid Syllabus, I'm going to show you all three views. And there are many free, intuitive, and creative tools. So I use Google Sites because the templates are already there. Basically, I just plug in my information. I add pictures, I add video, and I add PDFs, and, and the template is already there for me. So, And it's free. So um, I really like that. So what do I need to create a liquid syllabus? So my recommendation is that you create a liquid syllabus folder in your Google Drive that contains PDFs, documents, photos, et cetera. And Google Sites links with Google Drive. So you, I will show you once we get there that there's a direct link from the um, Google Site template to your Google Drive. So that is why I highly recommend that you save or create a folder in your Google Drive and gather all the documents that you think you're going to use. Um, so once you do that, then you're going to decide, once you're in your Google site, you're going to decide what tabs you want to include. So this is just a brief example. I don't use 
all of these tabs. Mine looks a little bit different, um, but these are some of the most common tabs. So um, those tabs are pages basically in your site. And the first one is course essentials. So course essentials uh, gives a description of the course, gives um, the required books and materials and the technology requirements for the course. So here in this picture is an example of what is in this link. So this instructor added the textbooks that are required, some um, links to purchase the textbook, the ISBN, the ebook version, um, and then some information on how to use that textbook. Okay. So those are just some of the things that could be in that button. Many instructors use a goals button, and this can include um, how students can be successful in this class. Maybe your um, institution offers a certificate of completion, so you can certainly put the requirements on a page for that um, certificate of completion. It can have specific course goals, right, like your SLOs. So for example, this link here, um, this instructor used the uh, first gave uh, a definition of SLOs because we know what SLOs are, but students may not know what SLOs are. And so she had the definition here first and immediately under the definition, she had those two or three student learning outcomes um, that were goals for her um, teaching her students. So a resource tab um, can contain the instructor's role, um, a, ske a schedule of weekly agendas, calendars, office hours, campus student services, campus counseling. Um, so that can be in a resource page. I personally use an agenda, uh, a weekly agenda button or tab and a weekly or, or in a annual calendar tab. So I do mine a little bit different, um, but every, you know, it's whatever your comfort level is and however you want your liquid syllabus to look. And then there's also a button for grading if you want to add that. Okay, so grading and assignments button. And then policies. So this one's really important. Um, what are your attendance policies? What's your Communication policy, how can your students communicate with you besides just email? Do you use other apps or do you use, um, you know, if you use Canvas, do you use Canvas Inbox? Um, what are add and drop deadlines or what are your um, census dates, right? Students should know that so that um, they won't be dropped accidentally or without um, knowing that information ahead of time. How they can collaborate with their peers, um, student and can, uh, campus code of conduct can be in there, netiquette uh, policy and plagiarism policy, okay? So in this link example here, um, this instructor added their um, add and drop dates. Um, and then for credit colleges, right, um, their refund dates, those are always really important for students, right? Um, if they're going to drop a class they want to make sure that they get um, their refund and, and what those dates are. So these are all the um, basically definition of those um, buttons. But again, um, I'm giving you lots of opportunities or lots of resources um, to look at many different um, um, liquid syllabus so you could decide what buttons you want to add or what tabs you want to add to yours, okay? So um, I'm going over this very briefly, but I did write an article for OTAN and it's on the OTAN website under web-based class activities. So this link will take you there. So I'll show this to you um, briefly. And Veronica, did the page change for you? Can you see the OTAN site? Can you guys see it? Yeah. No, I still okay. see the um, the PowerPoint. Okay. So let me just 
over here. Okay, so can you see the OTAN site now? Yes. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the article that I wrote for OTAN um, on liquid syllabus, and there are lots and lots of examples here. Um, I am show you the way that I um, add, uh, created my liquid syllabus and information that I included in my liquid syllabus, which I'm going to show you live as well. Um, and there's at the end, there's a resource section. Actually, in the middle, there's also tools, resource sections, um, links for um, website tools. Um, like I said, I use Google Sites. Um, video tools um, to create videos. Um, I use Screencast-O-Matic, um, but I also use um, Canvas Studio because our district does use Canvas. So depending on the length of the video, if it's a short video, I use Canvas Studio. It's just quick and easy to use. If it's a lengthier video, then I will more than likely use Screencast-O-Matic. You can also use emoji tools. Um, Alyssa, if you had a chance a couple of weeks ago, um, did a presentation or a webinar for OTAN on emoji tools. Um, there, there are lots of fun to use, so you can definitely use emojis. Um, and there's a link there for um, Bitmoji. And then at the end of the article, I have some sample resources. So I have um, about seven different sample resources. Mine is on here as well. This is my liquid syllabus from last semester, but I'm also going to share my liquid syllabus from this semester with you today. And um, so all of these here are instructors that have used it. And um, once you um, look at those, you'll be able to see that um, everybody's a little bit different in the way they create their um, their buttons and their tabs and the liquid syllabus. But again, you want to personalize it to your personality and whatever is comfortable for you. So we'll go over that um, shortly. Okay, so before we tour, let me, let me stop sharing for a second. Okay, so before we take a tour, how's everybody doing? Um, would you like to take the tour first or would you like to take a break first? Because I gave you lots and lots of information. Tour, okay, all right, let's take the tour. All right, can everybody see my screen? Actually, let me pull it up here. Give me just a moment. Okay. All right, so this is my liquid syllabus for the semester. Can everybody see that? It should say, welcome to intermediate advanced reading. Yes. Okay, all right. Um, so on my liquid syllabus, I don't have buttons for the tools. I have tabs up here in the top right-hand side. So each of these will take them. So this is the homepage. Each of these will take you or my students to one of these individual tabs. And the only one that I have a drop down is the resources because there's lots of information here in resources. And then, um, like I mentioned earlier, I divide my weekly agendas here and my calendar here, okay? But let's take a look at the homepage. So like I mentioned, my buttons or my tabs are on the top right-hand side. And then right in the center is my the title of the course. And then my video, my first video is here, Meet Your Instructor. So this is a welcome video that I created, welcoming my students to the class. And then there are some buttons here. And this first one is a link to our Zoom session. I give them the date and time that we meet. And then a link to our Canvas LMS, which is the um, learning management system that our district uses. As you scroll down, I have uh, my teaching philosophy here. 
And then I have a pact with my students. So what they can expect from me and what I will be expecting from them. And then at the bottom, I have a picture carousel. Um, and these are more personal pictures, not so much um, teaching pictures. I, you know, I want my students to get to know me and get to know what I like to do. So I have a little bit of my life philosophy here that explains some of these pictures. Um, but um, this is also a way for students to get to know me. Um, if we were face to face, I would share this information with them as well. I usually shared something um, at the end of the day, definitely at the first day of class, you know, we're all sharing and introducing ourselves. Um, but this is a fun way for my students to get to know me and I will periodically change the pictures out. So throughout the semester, um, I do, um, I do <laughs> uh, change the pictures out here. Okay, so that's the home page, and that's um, how I created my, or the information that I added to my home page. And then again, there's my assignments tab, and there are no assignments here in the liquid syllabus. I um, let students know that they can go to Canvas, and this is a direct link to their Canvas uh, sign in. And then um, the next tab is my attendance policy. So I want to give my students as much information as I can so they won't be dropped from the class. So I tell them how they can uh, get attendance for our online class. Um, and there are four different ways here that they can communicate with me um, if they um, will not be attending class. So my attendance policy is in one tab. My calendar is in another tab, okay? And this is a PDF. And the way my students will know that this is a PDF is there's a box, a pop-out box here with the uh, arrow. And that's important for them to know because if they want a copy of this, if they want to either save it to their computer or download it to their, uh, to their device or even print it. They will have the opportunity by just clicking on this pop-out or selecting the pop-out and then they will get, um, they will get the um, print option or the download option or they can add it to their Google Drive if they are on Google Drive as well, which my students all have a Google Drive. Um, and then under the module zero. And I call this module zero because in my Canvas shell, I divide the weeks by modules and module zero is always at the top because that's our resource module. And I have a lot of resources there for my students. So I wanted to add a little bit about that in my liquid syllabus as well, but the list in Canvas is a lot more ex extensive. So our accessibility of our course, information about accessibility is here and a link for them uh, for our DSPS website at our district. And then the netiquette guidelines are here. Um, there's also a PDF here if they wanna print it out or they also have the PDF link here um, if they wanna um, print that out or save it to their computer. If they want a copy of our paper syllabus, that's also here and it's um, PDF version as well. And I give them directions here on how to download it to their computer or save, save it to the computer or print it. Um, I want you to notice something here because I'm gonna show you how to do this um, in your Google site. Um, when you upload a PDF, especially a multi-page PDF like this is, so this includes my weekly agenda. So it's eight pages because it's week by week what we're going to go over and there's live links in there. And some of the information that's on my homepage is here. But notice as I'm scrolling down, they can see the entire document. Okay. Um, that's because I did something in Google Sites and um, basically I stretched out the window and I'm going to show you how to do that. 
Otherwise, when you add a PDF to um, Google Sites, you will only see maybe like half to three fourths of the page. So if you're okay with that, there will be a bar here in the site and students can scroll. But sometimes, um, especially some of our um, low tech learners, um, students that still aren't accustomed to technology, they won't know that there's more information if they only see half of this window, they'll just think that it's just this picture of my course information. So I'll show you how to stretch out that form with PDFs or documents that you add. And then there's um, under resources, there are also videos. Like I mentioned, I like using videos for my course. And some of these are TED Talks, some of these are um, videos that others have created, but most of the videos that I post in my class are videos that I have created. And then the last thing is the student learning outcomes. And students will see this both on my PDF syllabus. They have a link to it here. And um, they'll also see it in Canvas because I, it's really important for me and really important for my students to understand what the expectation is, what I expect the outcomes for them to be and the goals for them. So remember in the um, example, some uh, instructors call this goals, right? I just um, call it student learning outcomes and I explain to students what that means and what it is and the importance of it. And then the last tab that I use are my weekly agendas. Again, this is also on my syllabus, but I, I wanted a quick access for my students because if they're going to be absent, especially if they're going to be absent, they know exactly what we're gonna cover in class and they're gonna have some links to some resources that we're going to use for that module or that week, okay? It also has, um, you know, the holidays are on here as well. So, um, you know, if it's a short week, so like we had President's Weekend, we had a four day weekend at our district, that's how our, the calendar worked out. Those holidays are on here on the first column as well, okay? Any questions so far? So Diana, there is one mm -hmm. question from Jamie. She mm -hmm. said um, that she was live on your website and to view the calendar, she needed permission. Do you run into this with students? No, actually. Um, so this tab here, it, it required a permission. Is that what you're referring to, Jamie? Yeah, so I'm on your Google site. And when I clicked on like calendar and one other link, it wanted me to sign in to my, it said I needed permission. Hmm. Yes, I'm not sure why. It might be, it says I might need be access. A, it might be a glitch right now because it's a PDF. It's not a Google Doc. Um, but I'll, I'll check it out during the break, Jamie. I'll, I'll sign in with, um, um, I have several emails, so I'll, I'll, try, to, I'll try to use a non-Gmail and then um, and see what's going on with that. But no, it should, it should appear. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? No? Okay. So I think this is a good time to take a break because when we come back from the break, um, what we'll do is um, I'll take you to the sites. Um, I'll give you also, I'm gonna give you um, this resource um, with different links uh, that will help you create your liquid syllabus. Um, but why don't we go ahead and take a 10 minute break and we'll go ahead and start it now. So it's 1.36, so we'll be back at 1.46 and I'll start the timer now. Okay, so it looks like everybody's back. Um, so if you're just coming back, um, this QR code and this link will give you access to um, this liquid syllabus links and tools, but I've also added it to, um, to the chat. And I added this link and I also added the link, the um, PDF of my slides. Okay, so you'll have both in the chat. 
So let's go ahead and continue. Okay, so let me make sure I didn't skip over anything. Okay, so we're going to go live now. Um, this is the part where if you want to follow along and you want to um, have almost dual screens, this is where you want to minimize um, your Zoom screen, okay? Because you will be, if you do that, you'll have the Zoom screen on one side and then you'll be able to open um, your Google Drive or Google Sites on the other side. So if you've never used Google Sites, don't worry about it. Um, I went to one training and during that training with Melinda, of course it was Melinda, so she's excellent, Melinda Holt from O-Town. But during that Google Sites training, I was creating, my, my objective was to create my liquid syllabus and that's what I did. Of course, I went back later and I added video and I added all the other things that I wanted my pictures, but I, I, I at least created the shell during her presentation. So if you've never created, um, my whole point is Google Sites is very intuitive. And for those really techie people, you may not like it. You may like, like a blog spot because the templates that are on there, and I'll show you in just a moment, but if you go to sites.google.com slash new, um, and if you're not logged into your Gmail and you want to log into your personal Gmail, not a work Gmail, but if you log into your personal Gmail, you will... Um, you will have that access. So let me go ahead and click on this link. Um, so again, log in with your Gmail um, and your password that you use with your Gmail. Okay. So did my screen change for you? Do you see sites on the top left-hand side? No, we still see your PowerPoint. Okay. So let me go ahead and reshare the screen. Okay. Do you see it now? Yes. Okay. All right. So this is sites.google.com slash new. And this is where my two, so I've only created two, like I mentioned, actually I've created more of them. Uh, some of them were for presentations, but that I physically use with my classes. This is only the second time I've created it for my class. Um, so this is um, one of the liquid syllabus uh, from last semester, and that the link for this site is on that um, links and also in my article. Um, so you can access that if you want. And then um, the new one for this semester is here that I just demoed, and you also have um, the link and access for that. Um, but to create, to get started, you're just going to choose um, blank here. And when I choose blank, and when you choose blank, did my screen change or do I have to reshare? No, it changed. Okay, we, great. We're seeing your title page. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Okay, so you'll see that this is it. It's, it's kind of like a little blank canvas, but you have all these great tools on the right-hand side. So um, you have the first um, tab here is insert. So this is where you're going to do most of your building in this insert section. And then you have pages, okay? Which right now we only have a homepage because we just got started. And then you have themes, okay? So it's limited, but it's very simple to use. So that's what I like about it because I am not a graphic designer like Linda. <laughs> So Linda might be a little frustrated in this one, but she might be able to do um, better graphics on something else. But for me, simple teacher is this, this is perfect. Okay, so I can change the color here. I can change the font size. You know, here's the simple font, the Aristotle, the diplomat. So basically it just changes um, the font. And these are the only fonts that are available on here. Okay, so I like simple, so I'm just going to keep it simple, but I'm going to go back to the insert tab. Okay, 
So this is how you create the layouts. So I'm going to toggle between my, um, oops, hopefully it lets me toggle between this new, brand new, and then my current site. Oh, that didn't open up. Okay. Can you see my existing um, Google site or my liquid syllabus? Yes. Okay, great. So I'm going to just switch these over so I can toggle back and forth. Okay, so these are the layouts that you have to choose from that you're going to add to this first blank space. So I'm going to toggle back. This semester, I chose the three window template. Last semester, I had four. And the reason for that is last semester, I had one extra one here for my students, uh, uh, direct access where my students can buy the book. This semester, I have a zero textbook cost class, so my students don't have a textbook. So that's why I chose three, but it's up to you what you wanna put here. So if you remember, I had the welcome video here, introducing myself, um, a link to Zoom, um, and this is also on my Canvas page, and a link to our Canvas page, okay? Um, so like I mentioned uh, during the break, Linda and I were talking about this, and when my students access the liquid syllabus, they're accessing, accessing it from our L, uh, Canvas LMS. So to the student, it doesn't look like they are going outside of Canvas to, I embedded it in Canvas. So to them, it's the, the liquid syllabus exists there in um, Canvas. But for you, the teacher that's creating it, you know that it's a site outside of Canvas, okay? Um, so the reason why I have these buttons here is because the student still thinks they're in Canvas, but I still, if they want to go back to Canvas, if they happen to click on the um, liquid syllabus button on my Canvas homepage, they can easily toggle back to Canvas by going here. Okay. So that's why I have that button there. Okay. So let me go back to our untitled site. So Go ahead and add a title, whatever your class is. I'm just going to say ESL 6-7, but you title it whatever you want, okay? And you can always go back and change this, okay? Here it says enter site name. So um, maybe I would um, add the title of the class, workplace. I used to teach a class called workplace communication. So the title I add up here and then the number I added there, okay? But you can do this however you want. And then um, I'm going to add the four, um, the four boxes here. So I just drag it over, okay? So whatever you want to add, you can add multiple things. You just drag them over. And so let's say I'm dragging and dragging and I say, wait a minute, I. I don't want that. There's a little trash can here. You just click it and delete it, okay? So it's that simple. So, I mean, I don't know about you, Linda, but this would take me hours and hours. You, you're a pro, you, you teach this, but I, this would take me hours and hours to create any type of buttons like this. So here when, on the plus, this is where you're going to upload. So you can either upload um, a picture, you can select an image, you can um, select it from your drive. This is why I mentioned that Google Drive is um, interactive with Google Sites because it's the same product, right? You can add a YouTube video, you can add a calendar if you want, or you can add a map, okay? So it is limited, but I've never had an issue with the materials that I need to, that are included in my um, syllabus. Um, so those are plenty. So if I want to add um, a YouTube video, for example, it takes me 
to this link, just like in Google Slides, right? If I want to add a YouTube video to Google Slides, I just provide the link in here. Um, so I'm going to do that. Let's see. Um, in my jazzy beats here that I was playing earlier, just so that you could see what it looks like. And then I copied the link and then press enter. And if this is if this looks like what I wanna add on there, I choose it and then I um, choose select, okay? And then there it is. I can add text, you know, so, um, break music <laughs> and from chill hop. Okay, you can add whatever you want. You can also change the font because that's really tiny and I don't think 11 is big enough. I like to go 18 at least. And um, so that's how you add things here to this template. So your layouts are here. Um, remember how I had um, my philosophy? So let's go back. So I have these three templates here, and then right under it, I have my teaching philosophy. And notice how this first quadrant, I'll, I'll call it, um, is white. And then my next section is blue. You can do that. You can keep it all one solid color, but I like the break in the color so that it's visually, it's easy to see that this is now a new thing or a new section, okay? And then, so I just toggled between white and blue and then white and blue for the um, four sections that I added, okay? So let's go back. So in order to add any type of text, you're going to choose text box. And all I did is I, um, selected text box and then a text box opened here. So it doesn't matter if it opens up tiny. Maybe I have this description somewhere else. Um, I could change the font size. I could change the type of font. But remember, it's a little bit limit. Well, actually, it's not too bad. Oh, OK. I just remembered. You can add more fonts. So these are the fonts that I have up for my Google Slides. So they carried over to this section here. And you have the same type of um, fonts here or, or um, tools here or similar tools that you would have in um, Google Slides or Google Docs, okay? But not all of them. Remember, it's a little bit limited. So you can add your text there. And then to change the color in this far left-hand side, there's a little paint section there. So I just select it and then I can change it to light gray or I can go a little bit darker and change it to blue or I can go and add an image also. So if I want this band to be an image, just like there's an image in this background here, which I can also change, um, I can add um, an image here in this section, like a band going across, okay? Um, and then here is the section here um, for Google Drive. So if I wanted to grab something from my Google Drive, um, since I'm logged in with my Gmail, it's going to capture whatever it is I have in that Google Drive. So if I choose Google Drive, it's going to open up my drive. So I have lots and lots of folders. So I really like to organize my Google Drive. And um, let's say I wanted to add something from this class. Let's say um, I want to add a document or my agenda for the week. OK, so let's say I wanted to add my agenda for this week. I select it, and then I choose Insert. And here is my slide deck. So it's a slide deck because it has the features here for a slide deck. And of course, I can enlarge this, okay? So if you want to use this as a site, 
um, or um, if you don't have an LMS, you can kind of use this as a site as well. So I'm kind of getting into now the um, Google Sites portion of it, but I just wanna show you that you can embed documents from your drive, okay? And again, if I decide, well, no, I don't wanna add this, then I just choose, uh, I delete, and then it's gone, okay? So very, very intuitive, okay? So remember that I had those um, sections here, my buttons up here at the top, those are created here in pages. So I'm going to go ahead and now switch over to pages. And I have my home here, which is this one. To add another one, I choose this circle with a plus on it. And then I'm going to name it. So maybe I'll name this one calendar. And then I'll so now I have home and I have calendar. And maybe I want to add um, weekly agendas and then choose done. And then I want to add another one that is, what else did I have on there? Um, oh, assignments were on there. Okay, so you can just add and add and add. Oh, and there was a resource. So my module zero resources. So remember that that one had a drop down menu. So if I want drop downs to any of these, you go to the skinny snowman or ellipsis to the right of where you want the drop down, and you select it, and then you add a sub page. So let's say under my resources, I'm going to have student services link. And then once I select done, you notice that it indented. So you know that it's going to be under resources. And then on my tab up here, it already added that triangle or that arrow pointing down. So there's my student services tab. So you can add as many subcategories to each of these if you want to um, add multiple items there. So let's say I'm just adding and adding and I say, well, I don't like the way these are ordered. Maybe I want alphabetical order. Then all you have to do is select it and drag it to the area where you want it to appear. So I want assignments immediately after home page here. And now you have that over here as well. Okay, any questions so far? So I'm going a little bit fast, but to me, this is really intuitive and super easy to use. Diana, I'm not seeing any questions. Okay, wonderful. So what I'm gonna let you do, I'm going to let you play around with it. I want you to create your um i'm sorry I your shell i do have a question yes i thought because i was editing um some attributes and then i decided maybe i'm not seeing them because it's not published or something so i went to click the publish mm -hmm. and you're probably going to get to this but when you're publishing do you have to type in the whole sites.google.com and do all of that or do you just give the name that you want and then that's that's an extension of you know what I'm saying? I'm not sure. You can do it either way. So for me to access my um, my all my liquid syllabus or Google sites that I've created, I just go to sites.google.com. And then the it will take me to that landing page. Um, oops, not there. But it will take me to that landing page. So if I just type um, sites google.com i don't want to misname it because i'm afraid it might be hard to fix oh no you can you can change the name so when i, hit, so when <laughs> you I can click, change the name when i click publish i just don't know if i'm supposed to put the whole path in there or just put the part that i'm customizing in the name you can also unpublish it so if if you chose publish 
Um, so if I choose publish, is this what you're talking about? Can you see my, the window yes, that popped yes, up? Exactly. So mm -hmm. the example, um, I don't know if there, it's going to be added after view automatically. So I don't know if that's their web space and automatically your whole name is going to follow you. So you just type a name or if you're supposed to type the whole well, app, you, know what I mean? you can add a custom URL, you can manage it um, if you want, if you somehow want to brand it, you can, but it will, um, you know what, what I didn't do is I didn't, let me go ahead and preview this really quick. Okay. That's useful. Yeah, I wanted to show you that really quick also. Did not notice the preview button. No. Yes. So let me go back in. I'm glad you asked me because I forgot to show you the preview. <laughs> That's how you can see what the students see. So there are these um, buttons up here. Here is the right now my site is not published so I cannot have the embed code. This is um, Linda, this is what I used once I published it I used this embed code to embed it in my canvas shell. Okay, I can um, share this site with others directly from here just like sharing um, Google slides or Google Docs or Google Sheets. Okay, um, but this is the preview so when I choose preview. This is what my students are going to see. So far, I don't have much other than my tabs and that one video I added. Um, and notice this black um, rectangular area here. Mm -hmm. So right now it's on the large screen, which is like a computer screen. Okay, so this is what it would look like. For tablets, it shrinks up a little bit and then you could scroll up and down. Well, I don't have much down here yet, um, but once, you do, I'll show you in my created site what that looks like as well. And then here's the phone version, okay? So it's really nice and compact for the phone. Of course, they're not gonna have the tabs up here because it's a phone screen, but the tabs to select the other areas are here in the um, three horizontal hamburger link here, okay? Um, so let me go to my published site because this one doesn't have a lot of information on there yet. And let me show you that same tool. So that you could see what this huge site on here that has lots and lots of information, right? Did it change by the way? Do you see my yes. reading? Okay, yes. great. Great. So uh, again, I'm going to choose preview. And I'm going to choose the smallest window, which is the phone window. And here it is. So students can scroll through. Here's the video. They can watch the video very easily. Diana, does a student, when they use their phone, it automatically goes to the phone version? Or yes. do they see the big picture and then they have to select the phone version? No, they should see the phone version. Okay. Yes, this is what they should see. So um, again, the video is nice. It's not like this tiny little um, thumb, thumb, what are they called? <laughs> Thumbprint. Um, it's, it's good size, but they can still expand to see the full window of their phone. So if I chose that, well, of course, it's not going to look like this because we're on the computer, but they can expand it to the full window of, you know, you know, here's my smartphone, but it would expand to whatever my full window would um, look like, just like any video on their phone. And then um, they can just keep scrolling. Here's that Zoom button. So if they wanted to join Zoom from their phone, they could. Um, so everything that's on my homepage is here. And again, the button on the top left hand side or the three horizontal lines, they choose that and they can go to the weekly agendas. And my weekly agenda is tiny on here, but when they select it, then it 
then that'll expand to their um, the size of their phone window. Now, this is why, and I'm going to show you how to add a PDF to look like this, because if you don't stretch out that PDF, I'm going to, I mentioned earlier, I'm going to show you how to do that, then they're only going to see this tiny, tiny little window. So for the cell phone, this is where the stretching of the PDF is really, really important. They're also going to have this toolbar here, but they're going to have two toolbars and it's really hard on the cell phone to differentiate which one is to expand and which one is just to move. Um, so let me go back. Um, any questions before I leave this area? No. no. Um, so let me go back to, um, to this here. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to add a page for my PDF syllabus, and I'm going to show you what I mean about stretching your documents so that they're e easily seen on the cell phone. So now I have my PDF syllabus tab up here. And isn't this opening? Okay. Oh, I have to go to insert. Okay, so PDF, and I'm going to go to my drive, and I'm going to look for my syllabus. It's in my folders here. Just give me just a moment. And here it is. So I select it and I insert. So it automatically inserts here. And this is what I'm talking about. So it's only showing half of my page. Now I can expand it, which I recommend that you do to horizontally, but see how the circle is here. I can also expand, expand it uh, vertically. Now, if I don't do anything, let me go to publish. I mean, to preview, sorry. And this is what the students will see, and they're going to have to drag it down. It's, it's really, and they're going to have to use the toolbar instead of scrolling this way with their finger. Um, on the computer version, same thing. They have this tool over here. I don't like that view, so what I do so I don't like this view. I want to be able, I want them to be able to know that there are multiple pages on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my syllabus here and I'm just going to stretch and stretch and stretch until I this is an eight page document. So I'm just going to stretch and stretch and stretch. Now you could stretch it to the to the first page and just leave it like that and let them use that sidebar. But I like to show the whole thing. So I just have to keep dragging and dragging, dragging the circle. It's taking a little bit longer because I'm in this present mode, but you get the gist of what I'm doing. I just drag all the way to the end here. And I just keep dragging and dragging until I get to the last page and then I stop. Okay, so let's say that was the last page. Let's just pretend. So now, instead of seeing that one page on the window, my students are gonna be able to see all the pages that are, that are on there. So of course I, I would continue stretching and stretching until I got to the eighth page, but that's what I would do with documents. I just think it's easier for students to see that there are multiple pages instead of just that little window. I don't think that's very intuitive for them. Or also on the cell phone, it's just going to look really, really tiny. And they're going to have to use that little sidebar, which is not easy to use even with a mouse. So on a cell phone, it, it would be harder for them to just keep you know, pulling it down and pulling it down instead of using their, you know, I, I'm used to using the face of my phone to do this, not a little sidebar here. Okay. 
questions? Not right now. Okay, so um, we have about roughly about 30 minutes. So go ahead and um, practice. I want you to practice. I want you to try it yourself and see if you can add documents either, you know, you can you can upload your documents from the drive or try to add a video from YouTube, create some pages up here and maybe some sub pages. Um, so go ahead and, and do that. And then if you have any questions, I'm here to help you out with it. Maybe try out some different layouts as well. And then maybe, maybe one of you can share yours. Veronica, did you have a question about the PowerPoint? Yes, someone was um, came in a little later, so they wanted oh. access to the PowerPoint as well as the bit.ly that you had shared for the site. Oh, okay. Do you want yeah. me to upload it again? Oh, no, I did. Oh, okay, great. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. So while you're working on that, I'm going to go to the document that I shared. Oops, that's not it. Oh, no. On this document that I shared, there are two samples here. One is Michelle Pekansky Brock's photography course, and another one is Fabiola Torres's um, ethnic studies course. And these two um, instructors, I recommend, if you really like this, I recommend that you follow them because both of them are excellent when it comes to liquid syllabus and the fun things that they do. They're both very creative and um, they've done some amazing stuff with their liquid syllabus. Um, this section here that says professional development, humanizing, oops, I should say challenge, um, is um, both Michelle and Fabiola's training on at one online network. So they did a training oh, maybe about a year and a half, two years ago, but it's recorded on the at one site. So you can view their presentation and their multiple videos are there. And one of the things that I really like is all of their um, items on their liquid syllabus are open educational resources. So that packed that I have on my site, Michelle shared at her training. Um, I modified it a little bit, but she said, go ahead and just copy and paste it onto yours, modify it, use it word for word. Um, so they are very into open educational resources, um, both Fabiola and Michelle. And then um, this Padlet here at the end has lots of different um, uh, liquid syllabus. So at her at one training at the end, so she kind of went through what I did, but it was over a few days. Um, we got to post on this Padlet, we got to post our, um, once we completed them, we ha had access to post our liquid syllabus. So there are lots of examples in this Padlet. 
And um, let me see if that show you really quick. So um, here is where it was a three day training. That's what it was. So um, three day training on um, humanizing your course and, and creating a liquid syllabus. And people shared their, once they completed it, went back home, completed it, um, they shared their liquid syllabus. So lots of different examples for you to see what other people have done. Um, so that is on this Google Sheet or Google Doc that I shared with you. Okay, it's time for me to ask for help. Okay. <laughs> um, and I hate to admit that I use a lot of Google things, but I do not use Google Drive. And I'm sitting here trying to upload to Google Drive to have the files there to put into my Google site. And I haven't figured out how to upload files into the, into the Google Drive. I know it sounds embarrassing. How but to upload. How to populate my Google Drive with files that I then, because when you go to click to edit and add a file or image, it's looking at the Google Drive. And so I'm not seeing how to actually put a file in Google Drive. Okay, let me I mean, let I me go ahead and I, have. I just can't get it. I can't seem to figure out how to get it in there. So I haven't got beyond the title bar at this point because I can't get any files up in there. Okay, so let me go ahead. So are you trying you're you're in your Google Drive, right? Did you well, find I that it open? What I did was okay. I'm, I'm working on Google sites and I have Google Drive open on the right hand side. Okay. All right, so let me go ahead and share mine. And this is Linda, right? Yes. Okay, so here's my Google Drive. So when you add folders, you can either create a new folder, you can upload a file, or you can upload an entire folder. So if you upload, if you already have your folders organized on your desktop, then you can upload, um, you know, like, like, let's say your coursework, or you can upload individual things in there and then create, well, I would create the folder in here first. So I'm thinking uh, I have to get into Google Drive separately and not have it just there as an open window when I'm in Google Sites. No, you can have, yeah, because I have actually, look, I have my drive okay. open twice. <laughs> that was the problem because as soon as I, I opened a new tab in my browser, and went up to an open Google Drive separately. Now I have all the tools. So oh, it, okay. I was in the site, editing the site. All it was letting me do was look for files in Google Drive. It wasn't letting me upload anything into the Google Drive. So. Oh, okay. So you, <laughs> you were trying to do it in the same tab. I was trying to work in Google Sites. I thought that window would open up. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, no, you need, a, you need a separate look yeah. at all my windows that I have open. <laughs> yeah, it was only going to let me get to files that were already there. So right now, right. now I can see all sorts of stuff. Okay. And okay. if you've never used um, Google Drive before, I have files inside of files inside of files. So here's my drive. And this is just for one of my Gmail. Um, Gmails, but this is the one that I use for work because here's my Linda SDCCD file or um, yeah folder, and then within that I have more folders, and then um, what I do because I have so many folders is the ones that I use the most I title zero zero or zero one. Mm -hmm. So if you have lots of folders, like I used to have lots of things in my thumb drive. So I had to find a way to organize it. And for me, um, you can add color to your folder and the folders that I remove the color when I don't use, when I'm not using that folder that semester. So it just kind of helps me organize because I have so many uh, folders in here. You're only using not even six gigs. Of I know. You know why? Because time. most of my documents are Google Docs or Google um, slides in this gmail this is why i have so many gmails is because when i first started using this i was using my um personal 
Gmail, not thinking. And then I was uploading everything because everything was on Microsoft. So I had lots of PowerPoint. So anything Microsoft is going to eat up your um, gigabytes. If you use any Google product, it doesn't go against this. So that's why I created this new Gmail that I said, no, this is only going to be for work. I'm not going to do anything else. Um, this is going to be my, my work drive, and I'm going to use Google's drive, uh, Google Docs, Google Slides, Google Sheets, everything Google, so that I, and you know, pictures take up some, some storage. But what really takes up storage is if you up, start uploading Microsoft PowerPoints. Now, if you do that, you can always convert them to slides. You just kind of have to fix them a little, and then you can delete your uh, once you convert it to a Google slide from a PowerPoint or Google or Microsoft Word to a Google doc, <laughs> then delete the Microsoft product because that's what's going to start eating your storage. Because I have another one that's like at 14.9 <laughs> because it's everything Microsoft and lots of pictures and videos. <laughs> Oh boy. Um, so give us feedback. So, um, okay. To the wise, don't do what I did. <laughs> so I have a late really start here, but now I know how to get stuff in there. Mm -hmm. And, and Linda, you're, you're at my district, right? So you have access to tech mentors that can show you how to do all this. I'm a tech mentor, by the way, at the district. So I did um, if you. With I have not worked with the Google Drive. That's it. I've avoided mm -hmm. it. Um, so yeah, a lot of us use fear. Google. So one, one more site. You know, I did that once before. All these mm -hmm. sites everywhere, and I said, you know what? I'm going to bring it all back in. Just like when you have too many credit cards, too many bank accounts. Right. I said, I'm only <laughs> going to have a couple of them, and right. manage in one place. So um, I know. And I just went to a training with. Anthony Vargas, and they're trying to teach us how to use um, SharePoint. And I thought, oh, no, I just took me years to bring everything over to Google. <laughs> and it's only for one thing, for Academic Senate. And I'm like, uh, I'll just keep using what I'm using. <laughs> the Microsoft product. Yeah. But um, it was going on its way out. I'm surprised they're doing that. Yeah, it makes sense for classified and admin. It does. When Anthony showed us, I was like, wow, that is really awesome. It really makes sense. Um, and then it's under the umbrella of the district. So, well, they're probably mm -hmm. seeing the 365 professional version of Microsoft. Self. Right. Exactly. So it's mm -hmm. integrated. Yep. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay, so we have about 23 minutes left. Does anybody want to share? Oh, Veronica, are they able to share? Yes, everyone okay. has um, access to the share button. Okay, does anybody want to be brave and share what they created? Can I ask you something else since I'm asking? No, and I'm not volunteering to share at this point. So <laughs> I don't have anything but a title bar, and I finally figured out how to get one image in there. Um, that's, that's okay. <laughs> so I'm wondering about that link you made back to the Canvas class. Is that too complicated to, a question to ask right now? On your, um, um, you mean when I embedded my liquid syllabus in Canvas? Well, no, I'm talking about in your liquid syllabus where you created the file. Oh, yeah, no, it, it was really easy. You know, our login for Canvas, mm -hmm. I just copied that link and then I embedded it in that button. So let me, let me show you, I can show you that really quick. That's oh. really easy to do. I thought it closed the window or something. Let me go back to... Hmm. Okay, so let me create one and let me grab, well, 
I'll just show you live. Let me go back and share my screen really quick. Okay, so if I want to add a button, I'm going to, anything I'm adding, I'm going to go back to insert. And so here is button on the right-hand side, and I'm just gonna drag it. Oops, I lied. I'm gonna click on it. I'm gonna name it, and I'm going to call it canvas, right? Because I want to, and then I need the link. So I need to open up, let me see, do I have canvas on one of these tabs? I have so many open. I'm going to, can you see my screen? I can. Okay, so I'm gonna go to Canvas. I'm gonna grab this link, just copy it. I'm gonna go back here and I'm going to paste it here. And I'm going to choose Insert. And now it's a live link. Now, if I want it here, I can just, you know, automatically it puts it to the bottom, but if I want it, the button to be here, or oops, below, I should have done that instead. Mm. And if you mess up, it has the undo feature here. So let me undo that. <laughs> okay, well, I've been simply just deleting the whole row and building it again, because when I, when I took one out, I was left with, you know, I was left with one less tile on there. Oh, right. Oh, I'm sorry about that. So you can undo or, you know, redo. So, um, yeah, you can do either one so you don't have to rebuild it. But I've done that before too. If it just gets too messy, I've done that before. If I accidentally deleted this and I wa really wanted to upload, a, let's say um, I want to select an image of a computer. And does that make them have to log into Canvas again? It looks like it would. Not if they are in Canvas when they accessed it. Okay, because they're still logged in there. Correct. Mm -hmm. So That's good, maybe I want this one and then I'm just going to insert and then it inserts the picture to the size of that block or square because the button is already there. That's why I'm saying this is so easy. I don't, don't even have to resize the pictures. It's already... The dimensions are already there. Somebody built this, you know, it's limited in, in fonts and colors and things like that. But I, I think it's fine. Um, you can also shorten this if you don't like this thick block here on header type. I could do title only if I don't want a header or I can make it larger or I can just have an entire picture. I wouldn't do that, but um i can change so that was header type i can change the image i can select an image so these are the options when i clicked on select image these are the options that um, google sites has but you can also upload a picture if you want okay so last semester i used this blue purpley thing um my reading class, I use that, but I can select and then it changes it for me here. So if it changes it on the home page, it's also going to automatically, you just give it a second or refresh and it's going to change it on all the pages. It just takes a second, but it will change it. Mm. Mm -hmm. It keeps making my picture bigger. And I even went into Photoshop and sized it down. Oh, here? You mean the pictures here? In the tile, it keeps making the little, the image I'm bringing in larger and it's actually too large for the tile. And I keep, and so now I've edited the image even trying to get around this. So I don't know some way to make it stay. Um, the size it, of the tile? In the tile or smaller than the tile. It's stretching it. So now I made it really small, it stretched it. So now the picture is getting fuzzy. <laughs> it's only me. I'm what sure. if you what if you choose like choose it once and then use these use these here? Because what what I noticed is this is like a double layer. So 
it's the layer of your picture that has the these buttons where you can expand or shrink and then there's this template that has those buttons so um I noticed that when I created my carousel. Oh, by the way, those pictures at the bottom um, on that I added on here, let me go back to the home page that I added here at the bottom, it's actually a carousel. Once I publish it, these are just going to play through. And um, to do that, that's really easy. It's It's here, image carousel. So you just drag it over. I'm sorry, this one's not a drag. This one's a um, add, add your little thing. Yeah. And you just keep adding images and images and images. Yesterday I um, was adding lots of images. So you can either upload an image from your computer or you can select an image if you have um, have pictures in Google Drive or whatever. You can choose them from Google Drive or Google Images. I have lots of photos there, or if you know the URL of the picture. Um, so you can, there are several ways to add pictures to that carousel. And like I said, once you publish it, then it'll, it'll continuously play the pictures. Um, I believe, yep, this, where's my other site? It's, Let's see, on my fall semester, let's see. Can you see this um, site that says, welcome to our Vessel 6-7? Yeah, I can. Okay, so at the bottom, it's just once I preview, so when students see it, this just plays through. So this is what this is why they call it a carousel, because it's just kind of rotating and rotating and rotating your pictures. Okay. Anybody like to share? Let me stop sharing. Would anybody like to share what they created so far? <laughs> I'm not making any progress though. <laughs> Come on, guys, uh, be I keep brave. It smaller and smaller, trying to get it to be something that works in there. And just wow, now my mouth doesn't work. Oh no. Oh. Bye, Jane. Thank you for your message. I haven't given up. Maybe. Um, boy. You, you want to sometimes to be frustrated like this, trying to learn something new, like getting. I know, hurt. and and you know, I I was at a three day workshop with <laughs> with Melinda on Google Sites, so um, I did ask her though because she briefly came in before you guys came in. So if anybody's interested in possibly learning how to use Google Sites in one of her trainings. She's excellent. And like I said, I, I think it was three days. It was either two or three days. Um, wow. Just let OTAN know so that um, they know that there's interest and then um, they can put it on the calendar and, and get it out to everybody. Okay, like, I'll, I'll share this with you only so you okay. can see what I'm dealing with. Um, okay. Because I didn't get anywhere with doing the rest of it. <laughs> Sadly, um, let me see where the share screen is and then I'll switch. Can I do that? Sure. Okay. So there's a share and then I'm going to bring it over. Um, because obviously right now you're just looking at my desktop. I don't like anything on my desktop. So it's clear except right there. I have mm -hmm. my Photoshop stuff showing. Um, so I got, this was easy, the top. And then yeah. I tried to bring my tile in. I have shrunk it so tiny now that it's a little, little tiny tile, and and yet still, Google Sites keeps stretching it. You see how blurry it is now because it's yes. really a tiny tile. But I can't seem. 
for whatever reason, the setting on this is that it's stretching it. And I've gone in here. It keeps doing this. I, I started out with the tile that was about 300 pixels wide. And then I took mm -hmm. it to about 150. And now I've taken it down to 100. And it always stretches it to the same size. And, oh. um, you know what? I think I just figured it out. I know, I know what just happened here. Um, is, is it because of that double layer? Remember, I, I no, mentioned no, no, that? No. No. I noticed that there was like a, it's like a double layer. We just, I we only see the outside, but. Well, this is a frame with, um, well, it's actually, it's actually a page with three frames in it. But what's going on is, I'll show you now. So if I double click, so I'm only managing the, the image itself here. Mm -hmm. What it's doing is it's stretching it to one side to fit, and that's making the other side oversized. So right. what I need to do is I need to put in an image that's perfectly square if I'm going to mm -hmm. use square frame. So it took me all this time to figure that out. Um, <laughs> so you're using your you're you're trying to embed the picture from your canvas dashboard, right? Well, it's one of the images. This is the tile that they see when they go to Canvas. Right. I created custom tiles that they see to pick all from all their courses. So they see colorful tiles for mine. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, that'd be a nice image to put here as the go back to Canvas button. Mm -hmm. It was the same button they see when they enter Canvas normally. Anyway, I figured out, though, what is causing it to stretch this way. Having having created web pages in the, in the past with writing the programming code, I'm accustomed to being able to set the dimensions. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't find any way to get in here and modify the embedded code. So mm -hmm. um, it's I, it, it's not <laughs> like HTML code. That's why that's why I was saying Linda might not like this, but no, I mean, I'm, I'm just I'm laughing because it's such a simple, obvious answer that they want you to have a perfectly proportional uh, image and that's what it is so I spent all that time um, well now you know <laughs> figuring that out and but I'm reminded that um, what that if you snipped it I, well it's got I mean I have text in here so it's going to cut it off oh okay but I really have to make it a proportionally square image um, what I cut off on the bottom of here was where it says spring 2021. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I probably should just keep this one portion and I'll have to custom make right. it. So I'll just have to do something different, really. But anyway, this is as far as I got. And I was trying to figure out also how to have extra, have the line and not have the line height. Mm -hmm. and I couldn't um, so those are yes, those things are limiting. So it, what you see is what you get with the tools. So you're either going to have to. And I can't delete this either. If I delete this, it takes this tile out. And this whole yes, but you can add, you can add another row of tiles and then drag that whatever you need over. That's what I did. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. oh, so you can move them once they exist. You can yes. Move Okay, that's good. To know. So I had really <laughs> messed up one of my tiles, but I had already completed all this other stuff and I didn't want to delete everything else. So that's what I, I thought, hmm, let's see if this works. <laughs> so this is really funny because I got this part done in about two minutes. I yeah. spent all that time trying to figure out how to do this part. But right. you know, you keep your brain sharp by yes. learning new things. Exactly. <laughs> challenges. So I tell people that all the time. Anyway, I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll stop sharing and let somebody else jump in. Thank you for um, sharing, Linda. Maybe that'll help somebody else. You know, who's doing this. Okay. I love when I can't find this. Stop sharing button is hidden behind other windows right now. There we mm -hmm. go. <laughs> okay. Anybody else would like to? Marina, you're here. I hope. Are you here, Marina? Yes, I am here. Hi. I told you I, I was multitasking. I was I had a guest speaker in class today, so I was listening to her, but I've heard her presentation four times. But mm -hmm. yeah, I sorry, sorry, I was late. And thank you, Veronica, for sending me those links that I missed. So you're I've welcome. Been listening. 
and I'll send you those other links that you asked me about the other presentation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else care to share? Going once. Oh, come on. Going twice. Homework. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let me go back to, um, unless somebody wants to share, let me go back to the presentation really quick. Because there's one more. Okay, so, yep, I think I got everything. Um, so, oops. What's going on with, okay, good, it didn't freeze. <laughs> okay, so um, hopefully what you learned today um, is you learned about a liquid syllabus, what it is, um, you received some resources to get you started with your own liquid syllabus site, and you got an opportunity to practice creating uh, a Google site shell to house your liquid syllabus. Um, so I thank you very much for being here today. I hope you were inspired to create a liquid syllabus. I hope you get an opportunity to check out some of those other um, links for the liquid syllabus from the other um, instructors. And um, hopefully you find uh, a, a, a sample that you like, or you at least get inspired by them and um, you get started on your liquid syllabus.